All right, let's look at these problem 18 of the math uh, college entrance exam. The triangle here ABC, the capital A's, BC are the interior angles. So we know that uh, A plus B plus C would equal to 180 degrees. And ABC lowercase would be the corresponding size. Uh, given this is the condition, there are two parts of the problem. One is that if C is given to be 2 pi over 3, which is 120 degree, find the angle B. And also try to find the minimum value of this quantity here, which is the size A squared plus B squared over C squared. All right. So this problem is good to know some of the useful facts, some trick identity, or in the triangle case would be law of sine and law of cosine. Right, so for law of sine, this describing what is the relationship in a triangle, right? What is it? Let's say the angle is A, B, C. Corresponding size is A, B, C here, and then here just to show that uh, A over the sine of A, B over the sine of B, and C over the sine of C here, they are constant. The ratio is the same. Now, the law of cosine describes the side length, right? So remember that uh, if C is right angle, so if C is pi over 2, in which case cosine C would go away, 0. So this term will disappear, and then you're going to get a square, C squared equal A squared plus B squared. This is exactly the Pythagorean theorem for the right triangle, all right? So it's also good to know that uh, some trick identity here if you have angle x and uh, if you try the angle, the cosine is related to you know the cosine square minus sine square, or sometimes we use these uh, other terms. They're equivalent, right? So that's very useful identity here. And also, you know, in terms of the angle and the complement of the angle, which is a 180 degree minus x, the cosine change signs here, and the sine remain the same. Remember, in a triangle the angle could be acute angle, right? Or So basically, uh, the sine is always positive. The cosine, if the, if the angle is greater than 90 degrees, it's going to be negative. Otherwise, it's going to be positive, right? So that's, uh, that's good to know. All right, so after we review these useful identities and useful facts, let's look at the problem, right? Another, another thing is actually... Um, because we try to do a minimization problem, it's good to know a useful inequality here. Any given two numbers, a and b positive, and then the oh, the average, which is this quantity here, is low net than, is greater or equal to the square root of a, b, which is called sometimes called the geometric mean. So arithmetic mean is no smaller than the geometric mean. In order to prove this, this is straightforward. You know, so basically it's based on the fact that square root of a, minus square root of b, if you square it, it's going to be long negative, greater or equal to 0. But if you expand it out, this becomes square root of a squared is going to be a, minus 2 square root of a, square root of b, plus b greater or equal to 0. And you move this to the right-hand side, you're going to get a plus b greater or equal to 2 square root of a and b. This is exactly the the inequality, right? If you divide two on both sides, you're going to get a written mean is greater or equal to the geometric mean. Now, the original problem, two parts, right? One and the other one. So here, you notice that in this equation that is given, you have 2b and you have a cosine 2b. So you're going to use the identity, the trig identity to replace it, right? So sine 2b, we know that is 2 sine b and cosine b. Right, and then one plus cosine b here. Remember that cosine two b equal cosine square b minus sine square b, or you sometimes you can write it as two cosine square b minus one. So this is the trick identity we reviewed earlier, right? So if you plus one on both sides, what do you get? You get a one plus here would equal 2 cosine squared, okay? So we can rewrite this 
this is the original um, you know after after we replace this you're gonna get that so here you can cross one term here right and then what you do is that uh, you two is cancels so you're gonna have this and then you, if you do cross product here they would equal to each other cosine a cosine b equals sine b plus this now notice however cosine a cosine b and sine a sine b that's something to do with uh, you know the another trig identity which is cosine a plus b would equal to cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b so if you move this to the left hand side what you get is exactly cosine a plus b right would equal sine b all right so here we also notice that a and b is related to c in a way that a plus b plus c would equal to pi in other words a plus b equal pi minus c and earlier we know that if you do cosine pi minus c is equal to negative cosine of c so here cosine a plus b that's equal cosine pi minus c that equal to negative cosine of c so what we get is the left hand side equal to the right hand side so we get negative cosine c equals sine b now in a triangle sine is always positive right no matter how big or how small the angle is is always greater than zero so the cosine c is smaller than zero so which means c must be greater than pi over two right so we, we know this as a kind of the the fact from the given condition we, we know that so when you think about it right cosine c equal um, uh, sine b like that so this will give you another um, thing that we know the relationship of the, of the angle right so that would be b plus pi over 2 all right so this is how this is related now this from 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 here right we get this now now of course how about a we know that a is equal pi minus b plus c right so it would equal to pi minus b right plus c c is equal to b plus pi over 2 so if you simplify this this becomes pi over 2 minus 2b all right so that's another thing we we need to know right so that's equal to a all right that's very useful so for part one we are given this right as we mentioned here if we move here to left hand side you're gonna get that and then we know that a plus b equal this is equal to pi over c pi minus c so this is equivalent to, to this one so if if the given that pi over over here right so cosine c would equal negative b and negative one half so which means sine b would equal to one half right so b must be 30 degree which is pi over six all right this is the uh, part one now for part two we'll try to minimize this quantity all right so here we're going to use law of cosine because you have a sum of square like that right so we notice that c square right is actually c square equal a square plus b square minus 2ab cosine c if you add if you move this to the left hand side what do you get c square plus 2ab cosine c would equal a square plus b square all right so we plug that in to the denominator you're gonna you're gonna get this c square c square that's mean one and here you have a b cosine c and c square you notice that uh, if we use the law of sine 
you know, for this part, uh, this AB over C square is actually equal to A times C, A over C times B over C. And A over C here, right, is exactly sine A over sine C. Why? Because law of sine said A over sine A is equal to C over sine C. So what we get is A over C must must be because you can swap C and sine A here, right? A over C equals sine A over sine C. So similarly, B over C is the same thing, right? Sine of sine B over sine C. So you plug in here, you get this part. <coughs> All right. So now we are given the relationship and B and C earlier, right? We know that you know C equal B plus pi over two, A equal pi, pi over two minus two B. All right. So let's plug in to this equation here, right? So we have we got a sine cosine C, sine A, sine B, and sine square C. We know that sine square C equal cosine B because remember we said C equal pi over two plus B. So which means cosine square B equals sine square C. Alright? And here we know that sine A, what is sine A? A equal pi over two minus two B. So sine A would equal to sine pi over two minus two B and that would equal to cosine 2b, right? So this is cosine 2b, right? So we replace sine a with cosine 2b, we replace this uh, sine square c with cosine square b. So, and then we use another formula which is cosine 2b equals, equals this one, right? And this is sine, sine b square this is sine b square sine b square equal one minus cosine b square. So notice that we have expression here in terms of cosine square b. So let's you for the simple notation, let's let's use a variable t to denote that, right? So what do we get is this t equal cosine square b, right? So if you do some simplification, you're going to get that one, All right? Now, we know that this value is between 0 and 1, right? Cosine square b. Um, and then we try to minimize this. This is where the, you know, arithmetic mean versus um, geometric mean inequality would help. Recall that we said that earlier a plus b greater or equal to 2 square root of uh, a and b. Here this is a, this whole thing is b. All right. So greater or equal to 2 square root of a times b, which is square root of 8, which is the whole thing would be 4 square root of 2. So when the equality holds, when the two quantity equal to each other, this is a, this is b. This is when a equal b, the equality holds. All right. So the final answer is the minimization is this. All right. So that's we solve the problem. Uh, not as straightforward. It's a lot of algebra tricks you're gonna use, but uh, you know it's based on here based on law of cosine, right? And then a law of sine in the middle. And then there is the key here is that uh, observation that uh, how C and A is related to either B or or two B. You know, that's really important in order to solve this problem. You know, this is just one of the college entrance exam. Just imagine that. You know, <laughs> and uh, so in China it's, like, it's quite challenging to pass the college entrance exam with good good grades. All right, it takes a lot of practice. So we have another method though. It turned out that maybe simpler, just to, even though when I first spot the problem, I immediately thought, oh, law of cosine because a, a squared plus b squared, right? And c squared. This is how law of cosine is related. However, 
in this case, it turns out to be either to use law of sine instead. Earlier we said that a over c is equal to sine a over sine c, right? This is the law of sine, right? And b over c equals sine b over sine c. That is fine. So you plug that in, right? So that means a squared plus b squared over c squared would equal to ac squared plus bc squared with exactly sine squared, right? So it's equal to this. Now, earlier we know that a and b and, and c are related to, uh, you know, to b by, by the following facts, right? Minus 2b. So let's just plug them in. So what you get is, right? So sine squared b is equal to 1 minus cosine b, right? And sine, sine squared a, this square here, is equal to cosine 2b and then square, right? So cosine 2b square. But cosine 2b is equal to 2 cosine square b minus 1, right? And then you square it. So it's equal to 2 cosine b square minus 1 and then square it. Again, you use a variable t means cosine square b. If you plug in, what do you get? You get t, 2t minus 1 square, right, plus 1 minus t, right? So what you get is, here would be 4t square minus 4t plus 1, and then plus 1 would be plus, plus 2, minus t would be minus 5t, right, minus 5t over t. So that exactly equal to, you know, 4t, right, minus 5 plus t over 2. Again, this a and b, this is a, this is b, is it greater or equal to, yeah? So it's greater or equal to 2 square root of a, 4t, times b, which is 2 over t minus 5, and, and that cancels. This is 4 square root of 2 minus 5. We got the same conclusion as earlier but the steps may be easier, right? Use a lot of sign. Anyway, we solve the part two using two different methods, but fundamentally, um, they are the same, right? They're based on the, the very um, kind of a relationship between ABC angles, all right? So hope you enjoy the process and try to review the steps and then make sure you can um, derive each steps here, all right? Thank you.